Hey guys, just a quick video to show um, what guitars I've bought and what modifications I've made to them over the years um, just for other guitar nerds like myself that's always looking for new things to tinker with. So um, I think I'm going to try and do this in order I've bought them. Um, obviously like a lot of us, I haven't kept all the guitars I've had over the years, some of them have been sold, but um, I'll show you what I've got at the moment. So I think we'll start with my first guitar, or second, um, which I had 10 years ago, which is this BC Rich Mink Thompson Warlock, um, which I have had 10 years, so I had this when I was 14 or on my 14th birthday, and the modifications it currently has, uh, it has a drop sonic in the bridge, it has an Evo in the neck, uh, it just has a standard three weight fender switch, uh, 500k CTS pot, and it has some, well, novelty stickers that I've put on it over the years, which I'm not sure how well they will turn up on the camera. So this guitar is currently set up for drop C, there you go, it is slightly in tune. Um, I won't be doing any playing today because I have um, cut my finger so I don't want to make it any worse. But that's in drop C with the Damasios on it. So that's our first one. Um, like I said, kind of keeping in order, I've bought them. The next one would have been this one. So this is a, just checking now. So this was made late 2009. Um, Les Paul. I bought it in 2010 around March time uh, in my first job that kept me on permanent. This is what I spent my money on. So what makes this different? It's a Les Paul standard faded that was converted by a guy called Larry Corso, I believe, and they've given a nickname of LCPG. So they converted to Peter Green specs, or well, that's what happened to it originally. Then a guy put a historic 58 electronics in it. Then I bought it, uh, and what I've done to it is I've got a set of hand-wound Shed PA Daddies in it. Uh, they're on a four conductor wire, which goes to a Jimmy Page style wiring harness by um, RS Guitar Works. So I have it set, um, coil tap on the top, and in and out of phase for the middle position. Um, aside from that, uh, I think the bridge originally got changed as well, so it is a case, the only thing that's original on here is the wood itself. Sorry if I keep looking to the right, I'm just monitoring the camera. So that's the Les Paul, and that's just set up for standard tuning. So the next one is my Strat style guitar, which is my Sur S4. So I bought this back in 2011, so that's nearly um, five years ago now. Yeah, five years. Uh, and this is the only guitar I currently own that doesn't have a single modification to it. So it's just a standard S4 Sur. Uh, but I have got the intention of putting a brass block in the back for the bridge. Because that's what I used to do with one of my American strats that worked out quite well. Also, like I said a second ago, this is my S-type guitar, so I want to get rid of the bridge pickup and put a bridge single coil, same sir set, but just the matching single coil in the bridge. Um, the reason I haven't got around to it is every time I price up a pick guard alone from sir, it goes upwards of nearly £100 British. Uh, I think it's a case of the scratch plate itself is $40, and then to ship it is another $40 over to the UK, so it's a bit crazy money to pay for some plastic, but because I decided on buying a Sir, I don't really have much of a choice if I want to put a different pickup in it. So anyway, that's the Sir S4, standard for now. Uh, the next, well, the next three guitars I'm going to show you, I've bought more or less within the last year. So I bought this one in 2011, and I'd say for a solid two to three years I didn't buy any guitars. Uh, and quite frankly, that was because that was expensive, that was expensive, and unfortunately because of those, I had a very expensive tasting guitars. So anyway, what changed it was um, I wanted another Gibson. I looked at Firebirds 335s or 355s. Um, obviously, once again, quite expensive guitars until this turned up. So 
late 2015, I think Gibson had gotten to a point where they really hand sold the numbers that they wished they had of because maybe because of the automatic tuners or the, the wider neck, they didn't sell them. But for le very little money, I could get a brand new Gibson Les Paul Jr. with case, with electronic tuners um, to my door. Um, I bought the guitar actually off Amazon um, and I did pay for it because when it turned up, the input jack was dodgy. So always try and buy off a guitar dealer not a box shifter if you're not confident in fixing guitars yourself or it's a gift. So what I've done with this, I'm not sure how well it will pick up, but firstly, the elephant room, it's a matte finish. So I'll just make sure I'm getting that on camera. There you go. So quite literally, I've got sandpaper and sand it there. Um, I don't like glossy guitars and especially guitars which I feel that their best versions of the vintage style, they always look better satin. Uh, the Les Paul I've got is quite a satiny finish because it's faded. I haven't got the balls to sand down the serve, so that will never stick go, but this got sanded down within a month of going there. Um, the other things that have been done to it is I have a set of uh, relic style button tuners, like the old juniors. Um, it still has the sticker on the back, so it's a 2015, and obviously the styling is of the writing still 2015. The brass nut, um, I actually enjoy, because I find the guitar is quite... Like, all the open strings tend to resonate really well, and also being a very simple mahogany guitar it tends to resonate well anyway. Um, the electronics, though, it has a Shed PA Daddy. Uh, no, sorry, Shed uh, P... Shed P90, I'm not sure what the word is, but it's a Shed P90. Um, I have fake 58 electronics, uh, repo electronics, and I actually have the gold hats on there that originally came on with Les Paul that are slightly cracked, but make it look kind of cool. Uh, and also fake 58 supplied the machine heads as well. But I bought the guitar for 400 pounds. I sold the case for 100. Sold the tuners for 100, so it cost me 200 quid, and obviously I put a bit of money into it buying new tuners and electronics. Oh, and I sold the electronics for about 70 quid, so the guitar hasn't cost me a great deal, but what I've ended up with is a very, you know, my own vintage junior. So that one I've had for a couple of months. So after I got the P90, um, I entertained the idea of buying an 87 string. So my thought or train of thought was with this was get rid of that. I was very used to playing as a standard Les Paul, very used to and enjoying at the point my P90 Les Paul. So why not get one with a seventh string? So I bought this in February, March time of 2016, this year. And you know, spec-wise, very briefly, it's mahogany again, seven-string, EMG, it has a kill pop thing in it. Um, it is the Mahifi or Trivium uh, signature guitar, and it does active EMG things very well, so it has that particular sound. Uh, the limitations of this guitar, though, is I find the scale neck for the type of music it lends itself to. So the scale length on these, plain blue, rock, and maybe even some of the shreddy stuff that I can get on with, then when you go to the seventh string and you start playing, you know, more athletic stuff, I find the smaller frets don't do me any justice when I get up here. Um, and also the strings are quite slack in on the 24th and 3 quarter scale length. Uh, the, this guitar came from eBay, which I had a good deal on, but uh, Parcel Force decided to snap the guitar neck in half by here, so that's been re glued. Um, aside from that, it's once again, there's nothing modified, but it's very straightforward. Yeah. So that was March, and so the last guitar we're going to talk about is my most recent purchase. Um, and that is this one to the right of me. So, <clears throat> this is a 1991 Ibanez uh, Multicolor Swirl Universe. So, this 
So the, the specs on this one is everything's original here. The neck though is off a 91 to 93 because it's hard to date at uh, Loch Ness Universe. I'm not sure if that was the official word of them, but that's what they seem to be referred to as. So if you Google it or you already know the guitar, they would um, they'd be fitted with this neck, this shade green would be the body, and that's how it is sold. And apparently, according to Wikipedia, how true it is, that was the most expensive model that they offered at the time. <clears throat> uh, what I find quite strange is, debatably, someone had both uh, a multi-swirl and a Loch Ness and obviously swap the necks over. So maybe there's a Loch Ness somewhere in the world with a rosewood board. Um, the other thing that this has had done to it at some point in its life is, uh, well, scalping. So from the 12th fret downwards, the higher registers has been scalped, um, which I'm quite enjoying as well. Um, aside from that, it's all original. I think the only other downside was it didn't come with a trem arm, which I've already bought under replacement. Um, I do have some tape on the back because there's no back plate to put, to put tissue against and close so the uh, springs rattle. Um, but the, the main reason I bought it is um, my birthday's next month and I'm going to be 25 and this guitar was made 25 years ago this year so I thought it was a very cool opportunity to own a multi soil Ibanez. So let me just put that back. Those are my guitars. Um, who knows what will happen? I have, um, just before filming this, stuck this up for any interest for sale. Um, if you know of anyone that would like a Matt Heafy guitar, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm just not sure how much this is going to get played. Now I have this. And also, as you can see, even from the footage, I've run out of guitar hangers. So I either A, have to drill some more holes, or B, um, one of them's going to let go. Um, so, if you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, um, and well, thank you for watching anyway if you got to this point. Cheers.